guys, welcome back to Kirshner Farmstead. If you are new to our channel, my name is Kirsty, and today we are going to be making apple cider. Okay, so we went to the pumpkin patch last week with the boys for a field trip, and we, after we left, we decided that we were gonna make some apple cider, and we did, and it turned out so delicious. So, we decided to go on a hunt for apples, <laughs> and we found some. We got such a good deal. If you go back and you watch our video on our field trip to Denio's Farmer's Market, that is where we got these apples and we got them for about 40 cents a pound. It was $30 for both of these boxes. And it says that there are 18 bags, 18 two pound bags in each box. So we are going to open them up and see how they are. Do you wanna open this one? Yeah, watch your finger. Oh. We can slide the box. This one's open already. Oh, no. <laughs> what are those, Colt? Show them. Pick them back up. Look at those apples. These are Honeycrisp apples from Washington. More tape than I thought there was on these. No. Oh, we'll take that off too. So when we made our apple cider the other day, we got three quarts out of 10 pounds of apples. So we are hoping to get about 20 quarts, but we will see because um, these are not the same apples that we used last time. So we'll see how juicy they are compared to them. All right, let's get going. I got one half of one of the boxes unpacked and washed. They are bagged up into two pound bags. So uh, I had to take them all out of the bags. We are going to just cut the outside of the apple off of the core, and then we are going to chop the pieces in small enough chunks that will fit into the top of our food processor. All right, we'll get all these chopped up and then we'll be back. Okay, you guys, so our next step now that we have chopped all of our apples is going to be to grind them in our food processor. We are going to use this regular food processor blade in it and we are just gonna grind it up until, pretty much until you can't grind it anymore. Let's put it in. Good job. Colt really loves this part. Okay, so now for our initial strain, we are going to use this, uh, actually, vintage tomato sieve um, and we are going to do the first strain. You have to strain this twice. Okay, so see how it's draining out of there? Now we're going to take our, uh, I don't know what this is called, the sieve pusher? <laughs> no. It's kind of like a dowel or a rolling pin and we're just gonna rotate it around and get the, a bunch of the juice, the initial juice out of there. And then we're going to put the leftover pulp in a bowl before we are going to squeeze it, okay? Okay, you guys, once you get a decent amount of your pulp, um, but not too much, <laughs> we did about three, ba I think we did three batches in our, uh, in our food processor. You are going to take a, colander of some sort that you that can sit over the top of your bowl and then you're going to take a flour sack towel and you're going to put your apple pulp that you've already put through the sieve and you're going to put it into the flour sack towel okay and then you're going to wring the juice out it's crazy how much juice is actually left in there after putting it through the sieve. There's so much. That's why you don't want to get too much in this process because it'll be harder to squeeze out with the flour sack towel. 
So that's why I only did three batches in the food processor before I showed you guys this step. Make sure that your hands are clean because it is running right through your hands. <laughs> Okay, you guys, so the last step that I wanted to show you is the straining, the last straining. Okay, so this is the juice. This is all of the juice, but we were using the sieve to get this juice out, so there is pulp in it. If you do not want pulp in your end product, then you're going to want to do one last run through the flour sack towel, okay? Okay, you guys, so we got the final strain done on this delicious apple cider and I just wanted to talk a minute about the scraps okay so you are going to have some really dry apple pulp left and you there's several recipes for apple pulp that you can find online I am actually going to be doing a video on an apple pulp pie that's going to be coming up out of some of this apple pulp that we have today and then um, we have the cores, and you can make apple cider vinegar out of the cores and out of the apple pulp. And we are going to be making a large batch of apple cider vinegar out of this, as well as some pies, and I'm probably going to throw a few in the freezer for the future too. So one of the reasons that we went looking for such a large amount of apples is because after we made apple cider the other day, we realized how delicious it really is. Um, when you make it yourself and we thought that it would be great for Christmas presents this year So what we are doing is we are going to be jarring up a lot of this to be giving away to family and friends for the holidays So at the end of this video, I am going to be showing you a cute way that I am going to wrap It's not really gonna be wrapped but wrap the um, Mason jar of apple cider, okay? Today we are going to be water bath canning. We haven't done any water bath canning in a bit. So um, we are going to be water bath canning and this is the easiest process with the apple cider, you guys. It's literally, a, it's a cold pack. So you have a cold, remember a cold pack is everything cold. So you have a cold, cold product, cold jars, and a cold canner, okay? So I already measured it out and I know that I have exactly seven quarts of juice here. I don't know how that happened, but it <laughs> it worked very well. So I know I've talked to you guys about lids in the past. Actually, in the last video, the bone broth video that I just put up, I was complaining about a bad lid that I got from Kerr. Well, these jars just came out of a brand new case of Kerr jars, and every single lid in the entire case is bad. This is the second time that I've had this exact same thing happen, okay? It's an edge of the lid is crimped over the side of the, um, the this one is actually worse than the last one that I got. It's crimped to almost twice, uh, but these lids are completely unusable. We, we can't use them, they will not seal. So we pretty much have a bunch of lids, uh, jars with no lids, right? So keep in mind that I have backup lids, but if you don't have backup lids, if you're buying a case of jars with um, expecting that they are going to have good lids on them, just be prepared in case. Maybe buy one of these boxes of backup lids to have in case this happens because I can tell you I have had it happen so many times this year. The lids are just terrible quality. And it's, it really does get annoying. I'm sure you guys, you, you might get tired of me saying it, but it gets really old. When you're buying a product, you expect it to be the quality that it's always been, and it's just not anymore. Oh, I forgot to say, I am filling these to a one inch headspace, okay? So that means that you are either going to fill to the bottom of your canning funnel, or you are going to fill to the bottom of the neck of your jar, okay? Okay, so it is important, this is sticky juice, of course, so make sure that you are cleaning your jar rims very well. We don't need to give these lids any more of an excuse to not seal, right? <laughs> okay, so remember, we are going to uh, go fingertip tight with your rings, which means you're gonna go until you feel resistance and then go a quarter turn farther. 
there isn't quite as much of a chance of buckling with water bath canning, especially when you're only water bath canning for a few minutes like with these, with this recipe, but it's just always good practice to only ever go fingertip tight with your jars. Okay, you guys, so our seven jars will fit perfectly in my water bath canner because that is how many jars, quart size jars it fits. Um, we are going to be canning for our elevation for 10 minutes. I'm going to pop up a chart of elevation times for you so that you know what your elevation and time would be. Okay, we will be back when these are done in 10 minutes. Okay, a couple things that I forgot to mention, you guys. One, you have to wait until your pot is boiling before you start your 10 minute timer. And two, always, always make sure that you have one to two inches of water above your jars when you're water bath canning to create the proper vacuum seal. All right, we'll be back when these are done. Okay, you guys, so our apple cider is out of the canner and it has cooled down and all seven of them sealed which is awesome. Um, so now I am going to show you the super quick and so cute way to wrap these. It's a very rustic wrap on them, but you only need like three things, okay? So you're gonna need some uh, scrap burlap and you're going to need some twine and you are going to need a cinnamon stick, okay? Oh, and a rubber band, okay? So we cut about six by six squares of burlap and what you're gonna do is you're gonna wrap it around your lid and you're going to secure it initially with the rubber band, okay? The rubber band is not going to stay on there. It is just to hold it on while you tie on your string. Now, I cut my string long enough to have about, so I leave probably eight inches and then I wrap five times around. Okay, so you have about, yeah, about eight inches on each side. Maybe if it's not right, you can adjust it a little bit so that they're both even. And then tie a nice tight double knot, okay? Okay, so now that that is done, we are going to take off our rubber band. Okay, save that for the next jar. And then you are going to take your cinnamon stick and tie it on. Now, if you would like to, you can put a little card on here that says, heat up your apple cider. If, if you would like to serve warm, heat up your apple cider with your cinnamon stick. If you would like to do that, it is of course not necessary because it could just be for decoration. So double knot the cinnamon stick on there, get that, and then tie a nice cute little bow. All right, and you can trim those ends if you want to, uh, but that is how simple it is to wrap these up into a quick, nice little gift for your friends and family. Now, if you guys enjoyed this video, I hope that you will please like, subscribe to our channel and share with your friends because that really is the best way that you can help our channel. And if you also, and if you have any comments, please leave them below if you need, if you have a comment or if you need to ask a question, we love to interact with you guys. It really does make this whole YouTube video journey worth it to us so that we know that we are reaching people and that we are helping teach you something about food preservation. All right, as always, I hope you guys have a blessed night. Bye.